let's start by having a quick look at the external anatomy of the earthworm. The earthworm is an animal in the uh, phylum Annelida, which means little rings. Um, little rings, uh, if you think of a ring, it's a circular object, uh, refers to the segments that we find on animals in this phylum. So um, this is the first time that we see true segmentation in the body plan. So each of these little segments, or rings if you like, um, is, is essentially a repeated body unit, and each of those units is called a metamere. And this repetition of body units is called metamerism. Okay, so this is a, a unique development in the annelids, and we'll see it later on in, in other animals as we as we move a little bit further. Um, so externally, it's a it's a pretty simple animal. Um, it's a long uh, tube essentially. It has an anterior end with a mouth. It has a posterior end with an anus, so there is a complete digestive system. And um, the, probably the most remarkable thing that you'll see on the uh, earthworm is this um, pale, raised, sort of smooth area close to the anterior end of the body. This is called the clitellum. So clitellum, um, that is probably a good reminder for what the uh, name of the class is to which this animal uh, belongs, which is the class clitellata. So the clitellum is a structure that's involved in reproduction, and um, it's essentially uh, responsible for creating a cocoon or a case in which uh, sperm and eggs are deposited fertilization in this animal is external from the body. It takes place in the little cocoon and the cocoon then slips off the anterior end of the animal and is deposited in the soil and the little baby worms hatch out of that. So, so that's the clitellum. Um, some other things that you may notice, um, you'll see there's a, a bit of a color change front to back. There's also a, a texture change as well. Now if I if I run my finger up and down um, this surface of the animal here, I actually it feels a little bit rough. There are CT or hairs essentially um, sticking out of the the surface, the the ventral surface predominantly of the the skin of this animal. So um, those CT are used to help the animal um, grasp the soil as it creeps forward. Okay, so there's CT on here. The other thing we might notice, and, and it might be a little tricky to see on this video, but we'll try. Um, running along the, the dorsal surface, you may see this area where there is a slightly darker sort of line running down, and it goes the entire length of the body. That is actually the, um, the dorsal vessel, the main blood vessel, that is just sort of, it's, it's showing through the skin essentially, but it's actually lying just above the, uh, the intestine inside, and we'll see it later. But that's the dorsal, the dorsal vessel running the length of the body. So that may be another good indicator for you if you're looking at the dorsal side or the ventral side. Okay, so that is the um, external anatomy of the earthworm. We'll move on now to the internal. So what we're looking at here is the internal anatomy of an earthworm. Um, let's start by looking at the digestive system. So just to orient you again, we've got the anterior end of the animal here. The posterior is at the opposite end. Um, most of sort of the, the business is happening uh, anterior to this, the clitellum, which we saw earlier. So we're going to just focus at the anterior end of this animal. So the digestive system, of course, uh, starts with the mouth. We've got the mouth down at the very tip of the anterior end down here. That opens into a short pharynx, which is just this pale uh, bit of tube right here. Here. The pharynx then opens into the esophagus, which is actually difficult to see because it lies underneath all of these other structures on top that we're able to see here. Um, we'll come back to these, but know that beneath this lies a esophagus, which is just the, the next part of the tube of the digestive system. The esophagus opens up to this uh, thin walled sort of bag, this little structure right here. This is called the crop. 
So the crop uh, essentially acts as a stomach. Um, it's basically a, a storage unit for food before the mechanical digestion takes place. Speaking of the mechanical digestion, that's what we find uh, next in this system, is this hard walled, you can see how, how hard it is here, and, and slightly paler sac or bag, and this is the gizzard. So the gizzard is a very thick walled muscular structure which is responsible for mechanical digestion, so physical breakdown or grinding of the food that's coming in. And then posterior to the, uh, the gizzard, we find this long tube here, this whole thing, and that's the intestine. And the intestine runs the entire length of the rest of the body, and it ends in, in the anus, which is at the very um, posterior tip of the animal. And you can see uh, the wall of this intestine has been opened a little bit, and inside there we find um, digested food. It looks like dirt because that's what it is. Um, earthworms, you may recall, um, they ingest soil and um, they extract organic nutrients out of the soil, so little bits of, um, say, plant material and that sort of thing, um, which has been partially decomposed. So these these guys are are, are excellent decomposers and very important uh, for for adding nutrients into the soil as well. So that's basically the digestive system. Let's come back to what's going on up here. So the first thing you'll probably notice are these sort of large fleshy lobes. There's a big one, all this here, and it sort of wraps around on both sides. Those are uh, reproductive organs. They are male reproductive organs called seminal vesicles, okay? And that's basically where sperm are produced. And then if we look to one side, just below, you'll notice a very small round lobe right here and another very small round lobe right here. Those are female reproductive organs and those are called seminal receptacles. So those actually um, hold sperm after cross-fertilization has occurred. So you will of course note, um, because we have male and female organs, that this animal is monoecious or hermaphroditic, but they do mate with another individual um, to cross-fertilize, okay? So both male and female organs, um, there are other structures involved, but they are, they are difficult to see, so we'll, we'll leave them out for now, but understand that we, we can see the two there. Now the other thing um, going in this, on in this region of the esophagus, if I, I'm just going to move some of these reproductive structures out of the way so we can see a little bit better, you'll notice that there's um, this darker mass on top, sort of right here. Um, and it actually consists of a series of rings. Um, if I move them apart, you should be able to see here's a ring right here. Um, there's another ring right here, another one here, another one here. Pretty much in each segment um, there you'll find a little, a little dark ring. Those are called aortic arches, aortic arches. And those uh, basically make up what we would consider the heart of this animal. Now, the other structure you may have noted, um, when you were doing, uh, positioning this animal before doing the dissection, you were asked to lay it dorsal side up so that you wouldn't cut the dorsal vessel, which was that dark line running down the, the exterior that you could see. We can actually see a nice section of the dorsal vessel right here, that little dark line there. And it does continue on, Let's see if I can find it. I've probably cut it there, but this dorsal vessel carries on the entire length of the body, and that's the main blood vessel running down the dorsal surface. There's a similar vessel on the ventral surface, so underneath, that's called the ventral vessel, okay? So these aortic arches wrap around they act like rings that wrap around from the dorsal to the ventral side, allowing blood to flow um, basically front to back, okay? So those that's the heart, and then we have the blood vessels there. And I think that those are the, uh, the main structures that I would like you to know for this, for this exam.